So this month's video is going to be a discussion of sitemaps and web crawling. Um, and it's sort of a logical follow-up to last month's video about indexing XML. So first, a quick introduction to what I'm talking about. Um, if you put a website up on the internet, chances are that sooner or later, uh, search engines will find it and crawl through it and make it searchable. Uh, but without a little bit of help, uh, this can happen somewhat haphazardly. And that is where XML sitemaps come into play. Uh, a sitemap is just an XML document that lists all of the pages on your site, which you can submit to a search engine uh, in order to let them find all of your content. Uh, this is certainly important for something like ViewFind, where it's a search-driven interface, uh, and there may not actually be a way to crawl into every single record without typing something into a box first. So by publishing a sitemap, uh, we make it possible for all of our index records to be findable. Um, and so ViewFind includes facilities for generating sitemaps, which make it very search engine friendly and will make your content a lot more visible. On the flip side of the coin, sitemaps are also a really useful tool for harvesting content. And so ViewFind also includes tools for crawling all of the pages in a sitemap uh, and creating a website index. So today I will show sort of both sides of that equation, how you can make sitemaps from ViewFind and how you can uh, populate ViewFind using sitemaps. Uh, and I have up here sitemaps.org which is where the sitemap specification can be found if you want to learn more about how these documents are structured. So just as a really uh, simple example, I've created this beautiful website uh, on my virtual machine. It's just a couple of HTML files I hand edited in the web route. So I've got this front page and I have a link that leads to this other page. And I have by hand generated a sitemap.xml file, uh, which just lists both of these pages, the, the root of the site and the linked page. So suppose that I want this website I've just created to live in harmony with the viewfind instance I've been uh, demonstrating for some time. What I would want to do is create a sitemap containing all of the content of ViewFind, as well as a sitemap index, uh, which is uh, another part of the sitemap specification, which allows you to group together multiple sitemaps uh, so that they can all be discovered as uh, a bundle. Fortunately, ViewFind includes a command line tool that will do all of this for you. So I'm just going to drop to the terminal and go to my viewfind home directory. There is a configuration file called sitemap.ini. So I'm going to copy config viewfind sitemap.ini into my local config viewfind directory. And then I'm going to edit that configuration file. So like all of ViewFind's configuration files, uh, the sitemap.ini file is full of comments explaining what all of the settings do. Uh, and I won't go through all of these right now. I will just highlight the ones that are uh, most important to get things working. So we have a top sitemap section that's going to control how ViewFind generates your sitemaps. Uh, there are some settings in here like frequency, which will affect uh, the content of the generated sitemap uh, and which can impact how frequently search engines will come back and recall your pages. Uh, count per page is going to control how many URLs uh, ViewFind puts in each of the sitemap files it generates uh, because ViewFind sites could potentially have millions of records and creating one sitemap with a million records in it is probably going to cause some problems. Uh, thus, there's a mechanism for breaking that up into chunks. Uh, by default, 10,000 records per chunk. And then ViewFind will generate a sitemap index file that points to all of the chunks. Uh, and this is another part of the, the sitemap spec that you can create lists of sitemaps. The file name setting is going to control the name of the file that ViewFind generates uh, for its sitemap. 
Of course, it defaults to sitemap.xml, but in many cases, we don't want viewfind to overwrite an existing sitemap XML that was created either by hand or by a different tool. So this gives us the ability to uh, give it a more specific name. In this case, I'm going to call it viewfind sitemap. File location determines where viewfind generates the sitemap files. Uh, by default, it uses the temporary directory, but that's not going to be very useful in a real life situation. So I'm going to change it to var www html, which happens to be the web root on the Ubuntu server I am using uh, for this example. Uh, we can also control which indexes get indexed, but we can stick with defaults there. We can affect uh, how viewfind retrieves the URLs to put into the sitemap. Again, we'll use the default there, but you can tune that in some ways if it's not performing quickly enough. Uh, next up is the sitemap index section, uh, and this controls how Viewfind generates that high-level index XML that I mentioned. There are a couple of important things that we need to set here, uh, one being the base sitemap URL. Um, when we set the directory where the files will be generated, we also need to tell Viewfind what URL that directory corresponds with. Uh, in this instance, it's uh, http colon slash slash localhost. Obviously, in a real world scenario, you would not be using localhost here, but for this example, it will do. Uh, you can control the name of the index file that Viewfind generates. We'll leave that as the default. Uh, and we can tell it uh, the name of an existing sitemap that we want to include in the index. So the default of base sitemap is not a file that actually exists in our example. So we will just tell it use the sitemap.xml that was generated by hand for the demonstration web page, incorporate that into the index so that it's findable along with the viewfind generated content. So now viewfind sitemap generator is fully configured. There's just one more important detail, which is that I need to be sure that the user that runs the command line tool has write access to the web root or else it won't be able to successfully write out the sitemaps that it generates. So right now I'm just uh, running all of these tools uh, using my own dcats account. In a production environment, of course, you would want to have a, uh, a dedicated user for running viewfind utilities and you would have ownership set accordingly. But in the interest of expediency, I'm just going to use dcats for all of these demonstrations. So I'm going to uh, sudo chown dcats var www.html so that I now own the web root and have permission to write files there. And then all I need to do is say php util slash sitemap.php while I'm in the viewfind home directory and that will run the generator. That only took a couple seconds and now if I do a file listing of var www.html I will see that there is a viewfind sitemap.xml and a sitemap index.xml that were not there before. We can look at those through our web browser. If we go to localhost slash sitemap index.xml, sure enough, uh, this points us to two different files, the existing sitemap.xml that was already there that we told viewfind about as the base sitemap, and also this new viewfind sitemap.xml, uh, which has been generated. And if I go there, we will see that this contains a list of all the records in viewfind, so they can be easily crawled. There's one more uh, small step that you might want to take uh, with sitemaps, which is to publish uh, for search engines where they can be found. You may be familiar with a file called robots.txt, which you can use to tell crawlers uh, which parts of your site they should or should not be crawling. Uh, you can also use that file to specify where a sitemap lives. So if I edit var www.html robots.txt, 
And in this example, I'm just creating a new file, but you might have an existing one in some situations. All I need to do is say sitemap colon and give the URL of my sitemap, in this case, uh, HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash sitemap index dot XML. And now uh, if a robot comes to the site and looks at robots.txt, and supports the part of the protocol that includes the sitemap specification, uh, it will know exactly where to look and it can find all of your content. So now that we've seen how to create sitemaps within Viewfind, let's talk about how Viewfind can take advantage of other people's sitemaps, including our own sitemaps from our content management systems or websites. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Viewfind has the capacity to uh, index content from sitemaps to create a web index so that you can search your own website. However, uh, before it can do that, you need to set up a full text extraction tool. Uh, there are several places in Viewfind uh, where it can take advantage of uh, full text extraction to make the content of files searchable. Uh, so, for example, when indexing MARC records or XML files, uh, you can do some custom rules that will uh, use URLs within metadata to retrieve content and then index all of the text uh, coming back from those URLs. And that same mechanism is used by Viewfind's sitemap indexer. Um, Viewfind supports two different full text extraction tools. Uh, one is called Aperture and has not been uh, updated in many years. So I strongly encourage that everyone use the second option, which is Apache Tika. Uh, that can be obtained at tika.apache.org. If you just go to the download page, there are a number of downloads available, but what we want is the Tika app jar file, uh, which is all that you need to extract uh, text content from a variety of different file formats, including PDFs, office documents, uh, and fortunately for us, web pages. I've actually already done the, the download of this file to save a little bit of time. So uh, once we've downloaded this, uh, we should set it up in a way where it's easily accessible to Viewfind. What I like to do uh, is give it its own directory. We'll call it uh, user local Tika. And I'm going to copy the file from my download directory into user local Tika. And I like to create a symbolic link shortcut to uh, from the long Tika jar file to just uh, Tika.jar, which makes Viewfind configuration easier because we can download new versions of the app as they're released in the future and we just have to rewrite the symbolic link instead of having to constantly edit uh, Viewfind configuration files. So I'm just going to do a quick sudo ln minus s from user local Tika Tika app. 1.24.1.jar to user local Tika, Tika jar. So that's all we have to do to install Tika, just download a jar file, and put it someplace, nice and easy. Um, but we also have to tell Viewfind where to find it. And for that, there is a configuration file called fulltext.ini. So let's copy uh, config viewfind fulltext.ini to local config viewfind, as we always do to override it, and then edit local config viewfind full text. So like all of viewfind's uh, configuration files, once again, there are lots of comments here explaining uh, what it does. We just need to do two simple things. Uncomment the general section and tell it uh, to use Tika. If we didn't do that, it would try to auto detect um, which tool is being used, which is fine, but telling it is a little bit faster. We can skip all the aperture settings and then we can just uncomment the Tika path. So Viewfind knows where to find Tika. And as you can see, the default setting matches the symbolic link that I set up. So there's no need to uh, change anything other than uncommenting the line.
Now we're halfway there. We've got the full text extractor set up, but now we need to set up the web crawler. And there's another config file for that. So we'll copy uh, config viewfind web crawl.ini to local config viewfind. And we'll edit that file. So all the web crawl.ini uh, does is tell viewfinds sitemap indexer where to find sitemaps. You can create a list of as many sitemaps as you want, but for this example, the only thing we want to index is our locally created sitemap.xml. We could index the sitemap index. Uh, our viewfind crawler is smart enough to crawl into all of the sitemaps referenced by an index, but we really don't want to index viewfinds uh, record pages into viewfinds web index. That would only be confusing. So we're going to focus in on the content that exists outside of viewfind itself. We could also turn on this verbose setting just to get some more feedback out of the crawler while it runs, uh, but it makes no functional difference uh, whether we do that or not. So now we're all set up. Viewfind knows where to find Tika for full text extraction. It knows where to find a sitemap to crawl. So all we need to do is run the crawler, which is php import slash web crawl from the home viewfind directory. Now we see it's harvesting the sitemap XML file, doing a bit of work. Uh, and in just a moment, uh, we should have our content. So what the web crawler is actually doing is running the XML importer that was demonstrated last month. We have an XSLT that uses uh, sitemap XML in combination with some custom PHP code uh, to use Tika to extract content from web pages and then index them into a special solar core that was designed specifically for searching web pages. The other little piece uh, that the web crawler does is it keeps track of when it runs and it deletes anything that was indexed on a prior run. So every time you run the web crawler, it captures a timestamp, it indexes all of the sitemaps you've referred to, and then it deletes anything that's older than the time at which the process started. So if web pages are removed, the indexer will get rid of them uh, on the next run. You do have to be careful about this though, because if you run the web crawler at a time when a website is temporarily offline, it's going to wipe out parts of your index. So use with caution. In any case, uh, now that the indexing has completed, we can go back to our viewfind interface. And if we go to viewfind slash web with a capital W, that brings up uh, the website search which uses the solar uh, website index I mentioned. If I just do a blank search, we will see that I now have two pages. Uh, both of the pages from my sitemap were indexed. Uh, and just to prove that the full text searching works right, if I type the word lazy here, uh, that word appears on only one of these two pages. And sure enough, there it is. It highlights where the text matched. Everything is working. So one quick thing to demonstrate before we call it a day is that uh, there are two configuration files uh, that might be of interest. There's a uh, website.ini file which controls all the behavior of the web search. And this is kind of like uh, a combination of facets.ini and searches.ini for the main Biblio index, but these settings are applied to the website search. So if you want to customize recommendation modules or change labels or sort options, etc., facets, it's all in here. So this is how you can control uh, the presentation of your website search. Also of possible interest is uh, config slash viewfind slash web search specs dot yaml. Again, this is just like the regular search specs.yaml for the Biblio index, but this is tuned to the website index. 
So if you want to change which fields are searched or how relevancy ranking works, uh, this is the place where you can do that. Uh, finally, if you want to configure the actual indexing process, there is a, uh, an import slash XSL sitemap.xsl, which is the XSLT that gets applied to all of the sitemaps in order to index them. Uh, and as you can see here, this is really just a wrapper around a PHP function uh, called viewfind sitemap get document and import sitemap.properties is the uh, import configuration that sets up the custom class and specifies the XSLT and so forth. So it's beyond the scope of today's video, but if you want to customize things, what you want to do is override the viewfind sitemap class with your own behavior uh, and you can do anything you like in that PHP. For example, uh, you might want to extract values from particular uh, HTML meta tags and use them for facets or whatever you need to do. So that's it for this month. Uh, next month, we are going to look at how you can combine different kinds of searches in ViewFind, uh, which will be useful because it would be nice to be able to search our new website index and our regular Biblio uh, book and journal index at the same time. So I will show you how to do that. Until then, have a good month and thank you for listening.